Välkomna till Svenska kyrkans sens människan. Välkomna till ett samtal. Sagor om natten. Erika Hedenström samtal med Kitty Crowther. Most welcome. Tack. Samtalet kommer att bli på engelska. Berätta tre sagor för mig, snälla, 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 bad lilla Björn. Tre sagor, sa mamma Björn. Ja, jag sa ju snälla tre gånger, sa lilla Björn. Vilken saga vill du höra först då? Undrade mamma Björn. Den om att det är dags att gå och lägga sig, sa lilla Björn. Ja. Så klart, log mamma Björn. Welcome Kitty Carter to see människan. This is the very beginning of your new book, Sagor om natten, uh, in Swedish translation. And it's translated by Ulf Stark, mm. very beautifully, into mm. Swedish. Ulf Stark, som var barnboksförfattaren av Stark, som gick bort i somras. Mm. somras. And who will be greatly missed. How good to be see, have you here at Semenichan. Thank you. Most of you might know that 2010 Kitty won the Alma Award till Astrid Lindgrens minne. And you have uh, written and created the books about Ivo Vera. Uh, now I just lost all your titles in mm. Swedish translation. <laughs> That's okay. So got Lilla Groda and many, many more. I hesitate to call you an illustrator. I choose deliberately not to call you an illustrator mm -hmm. because it implies that the text comes first mm. and then someone comes in and create a picture uh, from the text. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that is not the way you work. No, not at all. Um, <coughs> if I, um, I really love writing but I really have this feeling that it comes from a different part of my brain. It's a different area. And I'm sure that there's part where the language is, the memory is. And I, f I figure out that if you use your two hands, you activate its connections. It's the brain is something really amazing because we think that we, uh, we only use 10%, but actually I, I've read that you use 10% now, and then maybe in a two, three seconds, you use another percent of somewhere else, and somewhere else, and somewhere else. So you are always using everything, and you need everything to be able to create. And so when I write, in my head, it's just like a film, but I'm not a filmmaker. I, I wish maybe, but it's a lot of logistic. And I'm a pretty messy person, so. <laughs> um, but I would love to choose actors, um, tell them what to do and to say, maybe one day I could do that. But being doing books, you're on your own. Mm. Of course there's the publisher, of course there's the graphic designer. But when I was a teenager, I was quite lonely and quite uh, mm, didn't trust that much the adults for many, many reasons. And so I saw, oh, but a book I can handle by myself, um, doing the pictures and doing the text. If I do the whole text, all the pictures are in my head, and then I get really bored doing the pictures. I'm like, oh. So the text <laughs> comes first. Yeah, so it's kind of not first first, first the characters. Mm -hmm. It's like um, if you're in a room and someone enters, and you look at the person, and the person starts to talk, and that's where the text comes in. There's a kind of third person, which is a kind of the language is coming in, and it's just a f it's like the first. It's quite magic because sometimes it's just a flow, and it's so beautiful because I have the impression that someone is telling me a story, and I just I just do the characters, write, turn the page, do the pictures, write, just like a child. Mm. It's the same. It's exactly. I'm a child with a grown-up logistic, which is great, but I have this, I still have the joy of what I was as a child and this uh, being amazed. That's really interesting because I was thinking, com uh, preparing this 
this talk with you about my son loves to draw. He's eight, and he like we often uh, uh, draw together. Oh, we uh, we take a, uh, one big sheet of paper and we draw like a story, I and and uh, my drawing is totally flat, and always very disappointing. But I watch him draw. Still, he's eight, and he's so he's so alive and he's so free in. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just so interesting to draw. Mm -hmm. And I saw you draw. We met at uh, uh, Barnbokhandeln, uh, briefly at Barnbokhandeln Bokslöka in Stockholm, where you were signing books for children who came with their parents. Mm -hmm. And Kitty, när hon signerade boken, gjorde ett originalkonstverk i varje bok. Och I'm telling them what yeah, I Yeah, so. uh, det kunde vara ett porträtt av det här barnet och hennes eller hans mamma. Det kunde vara en, 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 berätt, en, en karaktär i boken eller någonting annat. And when I saw you draw, I, 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 I connected it to when I see my son draw. And then I don't have it anymore. I lost it. Mm. And I thought, I just that thought passed my mind that Kitty still has that disability uh, that we, most every one of us lose when we're Eight or nine years. <coughs> it's um, you think it's lost, but um, I've been giving so many workshops with people who can't draw, and so I would put them in a situation where we would dance. But dancing for me is also doing this is dancing. You know, it's not just oh okay, mm. uh, oh I have to dance. D dancing is also doing a movement, taking the space. You know how it's. It's extraordinary just to remember people that you have two hands and two feet and you're alive, for God's sake. And you, you always kind of tense, oh, I'm going to be judged and people's going to think this. I mean, when you are judging others and I figure out that you are actually judging yourself, we, it's, we, always, we always react like mirrors. And it's so fascinating to get that mirror away and really see what's happening. So I, I take the people as they were two years old. I say, okay, it's no big deal. You're safe. We can all move. And then you go back to the, the drawing. And it's so beautiful because then the people are less tense. And I just love those first drawing because they're so expressive. I, I'm not really uh, interested in super technique and oh wow and I'm more interested in just one line and how you do this line. You say it's very flat, what you th that's what you think, and maybe because you're so hard on yourself, it's just me presuming. But if you s do this line, I got so fascinating of what do you put in this line. Is it, you know, it's like those women who's weaving, and then you put your thoughts in it. It's so beautiful. That's why I don't like computers, there's too many layers. That's a very good explanation why we lose it and why we, as adults, don't have are in contact. But why is it still? Why do you still have it? I think that um, it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, I do have this hearing problem, and so I've learned to read people and I've learned to read things on the side, and I knew that I couldn't be like everyone else. So. Why not do what I want to be? <laughs> I was not expected to be something. If you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not weighted to be in that position. And unfortunately at school, I had the feeling that um, I was stupid because I was always failing because everything was so hard. So my hearing problem is just uh, lower of, uh, 40% and I have this sound which is under 80. And so when you're born like that, mm, you you don't, you don't understand the sentence and you don't understand, I need to see the word to be able to say it. It's very difficult for me to just go to the sun and then I had seven years of speech therapy twice, twice a week and then I had another teacher had to come at my house and, and make sure that I got this thing. And I really had the feeling that I was stupid and I would never go to university and I would never go do a, a scientist or law or whatever. Um, but in a way, that was good because I just swim into the drawing world. I thought, oh, 
Yes. I'll go to a silent job. You swam into the drawing world, and everyone can tell that you are not stupid, <laughs> Kedip. Just, just look at that. <laughs> yeah, I know that now. And also, one way to fight that, I thought, okay, um, that's fine. So I, I read a lot. I, I really absorb and been reading, 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 reading. And that really helped me to feel less lonely because someone was talking in my head. And so I wouldn't be doing that if I haven't looked and read so much. When I met you now in Gothenburg, this was really briefly that we met. In the I was in the line having books signed and Katie Draw. Actually, my sister is uh, in the hospital having her first child, and I bought a book for this child that you're expecting, and you draw in it. And for five minutes, Eric introduced us. And then when you met me here, mm. you, s you said, oh, I remember you. Y you have this uh, red spot under your eye, right eye. Y you're the one with the spot. <laughs> and the thing is, peop the only people ever uh, uh, pointing that out to me, actually seeing it, is children. So when children do it, I always say, you know, this red spot can only be seen by children. Grown-ups don't see it. It's a secret between us. But you saw it, and I wondered, do you, do you think that your perception, uh, because this is perception of the world, yeah. th that it is, has been enhanced by... Yeah, so... Um, to go back to the, the to the sp to the spot, it's the sweet thing. It's because my um, one of my death death friend, um, you get a name that's a sign, and my name is is this, <sighs> and so that's why I kind of oh, <laughs> some connections, um, yeah. So <coughs> yeah, of course, um, I kind of got. I knew that maybe, maybe technically, I was not that interested to do very realistic drawings. Not that I am uh, lazy, but I got so interested in uh, les sens, what's the inside, and I got really interested in Chinese and Japanese drawing, because when you look at Japanese drawings, um, they call it in French the translation of uh, this kind of estampe, it means the floating world. The floating world. And I just love it because they are able to just do a little picture and it's, and it's there and you have the impression that they are, they, they are alive. And I got so fascinated, what's make a drawing alive and what's make a drawing not alive? And I think that when you put yourself in a distance, and you're trying to make something nice and sweet, it doesn't work. You have to feel it so deeply inside to be able to do that. So I meet a lot of people, a lot of artists who are uh, in this connection with the child or very spiritual people. I have met some masters or uh, yoga masters or uh, monks and they have this very beautiful childish but I kind of it's a tricky word because you can be oh but no just this when the child is so wise and they have this beauty of seeing or thinking that kind of child let's go into this floating world yeah of yours you mentioned that when you were before in our, our talk you mentioned that when you were a teenager you had problems trusting people yeah and it struck a note with me because I think that when, li when the little bear, the three stories, uh, the mother tells three, three stories, three good night stories for the little bear. And I actually thought that they were all about trust. Mm, totally. Uh, I think uh. that two of them uh, have an emphasis on it's okay to trust what is, mm. and it's okay to trust that within ourselves, we have the ability to go through anxiety. It's okay to be an anxious. We're all anxious. We have all fearful. Mm. But it's okay to go through the fear and into the world, into mm. reality mm. that is always better than we think. Oh, think. wow. Well said. Mm. And uh, uh, 
the story about Sora in the middle, in the middle is also that it's most of the time for me, it's most of the time okay to trust others. Mm. Do you have you was, did you set out to write about trust? You know, the magic part of doing stories or drawing is just you don't know where you're going. And so there's things I'm aware of and the things that I'm not aware of. So it just happens. It's not so calculated. It's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't have a plan, if you see what I mean. It's a bit bizarre, but um, I kind of love the creation, like a shamanic way to do it and to be very grateful that I can actually draw in that way. And it's, you know, the word inspiration, it's just this canal or not, I don't know what is there and what is not there, but I enjoy drawing. And I know that if I get stuck, I just have to wait and be a bit more focused. I, I, I do um, meditation and it really helps me to, to focus and to have this empty page. And I also like to think, what would be the dream of that page? There's so many layers of what can be there and what can take part of it from my history and from the things I've been reading and the things that I see today and it's kind of a combination. So when I did the bat, it's connect to a small story that happened where I was with a friend and he had a bat in his cellar and he said, do you want to see the bat? I said, oh yes, I would love to see the bat. So we went down and it was this beautiful little bat and he said, well, if it's really sleeping, you can actually touch it. There's this little furry beautiful and so this friend put his finger really close and then this bat went like mm, no <laughs> he didn't say no but you know he, he just moved over and I was, it was so beautiful so I said he had to be in a book one day <laughs> yeah and for me it was is this a story about if you so so often we stay on the threshold of our fears mm. they make us go all rigid and yeah freeze up uh, but if you go close yeah, and yeah. feel it's fussy, fussy through. True. You can go through it and out into Sometimes the Sometimes we make, we make us, I was talking to Anna, who did this book of Hilma, well, um, art, and we were talking about fear, how much we say to the woman, it's dangerous, the street is dangerous, and it's, of course it's dangerous, but it's make it ten times worse. And so you kind of feel, oh, I'm actually not safe nowhere kind of, I or the information that I got. So I think that my one way of um, giving tenderness and safety to mm -hmm. the children, and I really like that idea that these books go into the house, which is a huge privilege, going in a lot of little hands near to their sleep. And I really love that I can maybe just, just do that and say, okay, you're fine. I think one, there are many different go really good children's authors, but I think one thing that uh, many of them, ha many of you have in common is that you seem to remember very well mm. what it was like to be a child. Mm. And yeah. in a sense, writing and drawing for that child. Yeah, totally. It's just, I, I remember, I remember how, how I was, or she was, I don't know how to say this. Um, and I remember that she loved super strong books. If, um, it, if it was, uh, there's a book in Belgium called uh, Martine, and it's a very sweet little girl, and she has this dog, and she's just this perfect person. She cooks, and she takes care of her brother, and blah, 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 blah. But I n and she had the nice little dresses and nice hair, and, and I was with glasses, mm -hmm. and I had uh, teeth bracelets, and I had hearing aids, and I was uh, like a boy, and I liked playing football and fighting, and so I was no way close to this perfect little girl. So, and I also had those very strong feelings that I couldn't hold and understand. And reading this um, fantastic, uh, like Tommy Ungera, the little girl with the matches, mm. I would cry at the end, but I th it felt so good to, <laughs> to actually cry, ah, <sighs> you know to have this something experience, not just sugar coat, but have something, something to, to grab and to think of. I really love that. 
Thank you, Kitty Kraut. I'm going to finish very, very soon uh, by reading a few lines from your book that I sure. think apply. It's, it's a few words for us all, and I think they apply very much to the situation we have had in Gothenburg this weekend mm. with a Nazi demonstration and uh, the opposition to mm. that horrendous thing. So I'm going to quote you mm. at the end of our talk. In Swedish. Sure. Mamma Björn kysste lilla Björn och viskade. Välj en stjärna som leder dig hela vägen fram till imorgon. Mm.